Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and welcome to Wasteland Talks, my weekly talk show where I talk about whatever the hell I want. And, because, you know, it could be movies, it could be TV, it could be music, it could be gaming, it could be sports, specifically baseball, up to this point. So I try to hit all kinds of different topics here, and this gives me a little bit more freedom to do those kinds of things. And what I'm going to be doing with this and another episode is catching up on some of the directors that I highlighted on Welcome to the Wasteland through my series Ranking. And I'm going to be ranking all the films in this particular video of my favorite directors, the Coen Brothers. And I'll be going away for two weeks, so this way I have some content for all of you to enjoy when it gets posted. So here it is, my countdown of the 19 Coen Brothers films that we have here. And this does include Tragedy of Macbeth, so either the Coen Brothers solo directing something or them directing together. I'm going to start off at the bottom with number 19, which is The Lady Killers, which is definitely the most flawed film. I still get a lot of laughs out of it. And I think Tom Hanks is a lot of fun. He's definitely having a lot of fun. It's an interesting tone, but it's messy. It's messy and, you know, it's kind of silly and doesn't really come together all the way. Still have some enjoyment out of it, definitely at the bottom. My number 18 is The Hudsucker Proxy. I do think this film also has some tonal issues and trying to really figure out what it's trying to be, but this, I do think, is a good film, and you have Tim Robbins, you have um, Jennifer Jason Lee, <laughs> Bruce Campbell popping up, and Paul Newman. And I think it is a solid, quirky, slapsticky, old-school kind of comedy with some dark edges to it and some interesting twists and turns. Number 17, and this is where it's really getting to. I really enjoy all these films. This is just preference. The Man Who Wasn't There, which is a crisp, beautiful black-and-white shot film from Roger Deakins with the Coen brothers. And it is an interesting noir kind of setting with very unconventional and awkward violence that winds up happening and you have this quiet man played by Billy Bob Thornton who gives a fantastic performance trying to take it all in and I think this film is definitely worth a, a checking out. Now my number 16 is The Ballad of Buster Scruggs and if you were ranking this specifically based off of some of the content in it. Some of these would be really high up there. I do love the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, and it just, there's certain one of these stories that do feel less truly fought out, less well conveyed, but like the Ballad of Buster Scruggs with Tim Blake Nelson, it's great. I love the prospector the gold rush one with tom waits i think that one's great it's a beautifully shot western it just and for an anthology it doesn't really feel like it comes together that much but it does you know deliver some really solid to strong western stories and i do really enjoy it then next we have number 15 hail caesar which i think i like hail caesar more than most and I think Hail Caesar is such a blast, it has such a giant cast. Josh Brolin is amazing in this. Channing Tatum's great. Um, Alden Ehrenreich is also great. But Josh Brolin, I really think, doesn't get enough credit for such a strong central performance here. I cared about Eddie Mannix's dilemma. Does he leave being a fixer for the movies, which will probably be less stressful and you'll be making more money, but... He really loves what he does. And George Clooney is just an absolute blast. So then next we have number 14, which is Blood Simple. And this is the original Coen Brothers film, Francis McDormand, E. Emmett, Wal uh, M. Emmett Walsh, who is eerie and unnerving as this private investigator. And it has such an amazing climax it does feel early on, lower budget, but it definitely captures the stark intensity of the Coen brothers. Next up at number 
13, I have Miller's Crossing, which I absolutely love. This, like, Prohibition-era gangster movie with Gabriel Byrne, Albert Finney. John Turturro gives one of the best performances of career, his career. Uh, Marcia Gay Harden. It's just one of those kinds of films that really hits a lot of beats in terms of, like, gangster movies. It's really well made. And it has some intriguing twists and turns along the way. That scene with Gabriel Byrne and John Turturro out in the woods, perfect. Number 12, Intolerable Cruelty. I love this movie. I laugh so hard. And the second Suspicious Minds by Elvis starts playing over the credits, I'm in. And George Clooney and Catherine Zeta-Jones are just too irresistible together. Like, small roles for, like, Richard Jenkins and you know, Cedric the Entertainer and Jeffrey Rush. It's just a zany, crazy kind of film with two perfect leads in it. Now, this is where we're really getting into the thick of it. So number 11, and this is definitely just preferences inside Lewin Davis. Oscar Isaac's amazing. It's a beautifully shot film, such a grand cast, beautiful use of music. And I love the scenes, a brief scene between like, Oscar Isaac playing for F. Murray Abraham towards the end of the film just hits. And I love the mu like I said, I love the music and the silly, campy um, song that Adam Driver and Justin Timberlake and Oscar Isaac play is just ridiculous. But it is a very moving film, Carrie Mulligan as well. Now, getting into our top ten, my number ten is Burn After Reading. George Clooney, Paranoid Face. Brad Pitt being a complete doofus, John Malkovich being the John Malky, uh, John Malkovichiest, and Francis McDormand. Hi, I'm Linda Litsky. And you have oh my God, one of my favorite things to quote with J.K. Simmons as his head of the CIA, and just this whole entire film is filled with paranoia. And all you need to have to sum it up is George Clooney's face. <laughs> and uh, next up. After Bird After Reading, we have number nine, which is The Tragedy of Macbeth. This is a lean, mean adaptation of Macbeth. Strikingly gorgeous black and white. Incredible performances from um, Denzel Washington, Francis McDormand, Catherine Hunter, and just everybody involved. Denzel killed it. And Francis McDormand has the most serious side eye in the history of cinema. Now, number eight, we have... Uh, so, this is, yes, number eight, A Serious Man. I love Michael Stuhlbarg in this, and Fred Melamond, and just this cast, Richard Kind, it's not the biggest name cast, but this is so very personal. You can feel it, and just the representation of the Jewish community in this, and all the cast is pitch perfect, it's deeply thematic. Just this grand moral story, moral quandary, and I just love every second of it. Number seven, Raising Arizona, Nick Cage, Holly Hunter, and John Goodman. It's just, this film is zany as hell, over the top, quirky, crazy, the, like this wasteland bike rider from hell coming after him. It just, the humor is off the charts with this, the yodeling music, that whole entire him trying to steal the huggies is just absolutely amazing from start to finish. This is a crazy movie. Now, getting into my top six here, we got number six, Fargo, which is arguably one of their best films. And this is, this is like peak Coen's. Francis McDormand, amazing. Steve Buscemi, Amazing. Peter Stomare, William H. Macy. The accents are absurd. The landscape is stark and striking. The violence and the danger is so awkward and messy. And it just takes you on this crazy ride. This is pitch perfect, Coen Brothers. Now my top five. Number five, True Grit. I am a man of westerns. I love westerns. And this is the True Grit adaptation. Sorry, John Wayne. Jeff Bridges' is amazing, Haley Steinfeld is amazing and just incredible in this film. Throw in Matt Damon and Josh Brolin and all the little tiny roles from like, I do have my bare skin. And like 
everything. Like, Donald Gleason has, like, a tiny role in it, too. It's just, this is the kind of film that it's strikingly beautiful, amazing music, just a beautiful landscape, perfect cinematography, and a compelling tale, great western, and Jeff Bridges just off the charts. Now, we're getting to some very Shane films here. Number four, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? The movie that made bluegrass relevant in 2000. This is the work that Deacons did desaturating this film in post is amazing. The music is just off the charts. Top the charts, for that matter. And George Clooney is, like, the best. Like, he is just killing it in this movie with Tim Blake Nelson and John Turturro. John Goodman as a Cyclops. Um, oh my god. Wait, uh, Wayne Duvall as Homer Stokes. This just nerdy looking um, politician who happens to be a Grand Dragon of the Ku Klux Klan. The whole Ku Klux Klan scene that feels like right out of Wizard of Oz. And all kinds of stuff. Charles Durning. Oh my god. Pappy O'Daniels. Just this adaptation of the Odyssey is so creative and so engaging from start to finish. This is one of my personal favorites and one that I don't think gets enough attention is Barton Fink, my number three. John Turturro, performance of a lifetime. John Goodman. Yes. This is create. Uh, this captures the writer's block, the creative process at its worst, and starkly beautiful. The production design is pitch perfect. Totoro gives legitimately the best performance of his career. And just, this captures the artist so perfectly. Now the top two. These are distinctly 100% Oh my god, I could talk hours about both of these. Number two, No Country for Old Men. So starkly funny. I used to laugh so much watching this movie, even though how dark it is. Cormac McCarthy's story is brought to life perfectly. This cast, Tommy Lee Jones never gets enough credit for this film. He is absolutely amazing. Josh Brolin, great. Javier Bardem, chill to the bone. And just everyone in between, like Kelly McDonald, uh, Woody Harrelson, Stephen Root. Just everybody in this film is pitch perfect. This is top-notch filmmaking. Who needs a score? Sorry, Carter Burwell. Um, Carter Burwell is great in like all the Coen Brothers films, and they didn't need it. The, the story tells itself. The cinematography is incredible. I think this is one of the best that Deacons has ever shot. And just the intensity, the unexpectedness, you will not predict what's going to happen watching this for the first time. And my number one, The Big Lebowski. The dude abides, man. Just Jeff Bridges as the dude, John Goodman as Walter, Steve Buscemi as Donnie, and everybody else from top to bottom. Just Philip Seymour Hoffman in Tiny Rose, Peter Stonemare, um, Julianne Moore, David Thewlis, everybody from top to bottom. This is the crazy... John Turturro is the Jesus. This is the most crazy band of characters all the way down to The Stranger, played by Sam Elliott. And just the music is perfect. Gutter Balls is one of my favorite sequences in any film ever. Just dropped in to see what condition my condition was in. Thank you, Kenny Rogers. And just... And the first edition. Like, everything about this film is pitch perfect. It has that great film noir detective story lampoon from top to bottom. Love every minute of this film, and that's why it's my favorite. That's why the Coens are my favorite. Gushed all over these films. Humongous fan of the Coens. If you haven't seen any of them, check them out. They're all worth seeing. I do enjoy Lady Killers, but it's a hard sell. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this list. Tell me why I'm wrong. Let me know what you think. Take a look at my list, listen in, and I had a lot of fun talking about, and I've reviewed some of their films at length. I've done all of these on Welcome to the Wasteland, so if you want to hear my deep thoughts about any of them, go over, check out Welcome to the Wasteland, and thank you as always for tuning in and supporting your Wasteland reviewer.